Right, welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic where I help and solve your bike related problems that you've got. So if you've got a bike related problem, leave it for me down there in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to help answer it in a forthcoming episode. But as ever, let's crack on with the first question this week and it comes in from Ninja Biker. Now Ninja Biker has got themselves a hybrid road bike and also a 29er mountain bike. <laughs> one of those mountain bikers. Anyway, they want to know, could they put the mountain bike wheels onto the hybrid road bike and would they need to change anything around other than possibly the uh, cassette of the gears? So, nice question there, Ninja Biker. Few things to consider. Firstly, your brake type. Do you have disc brakes on one and rim brakes on another? Could be a bit of a problem. Also, the uh, frame widths are different generally from a mountain bike to a hybrid road bike in that your hub overlock nut distance is different between the two. So on uh, rim brake versions, for instance, on a mountain bike, it's 135 millimeters, and on a road bike, 130, meaning that the frames can't strictly accommodate those different widths of hubs. So there we are, there's a little problem too. And also something to consider is tire clearance too, because, well, if you're gonna be running those big old 29er tires, it could well end up rubbing on the inside of your stays and therefore not just ruining your paintwork, actually going through the material. So I'd have a check of those three things first of all and then, well, get back to me if you've got any more questions, Ninja Biker. Right, next question comes from Eat, Ride, Grow and it says, Hi John, if I have a bike with SRAM Red 10 speed, can I upgrade to 11 speed by changing the shifters, the cassette and chain? Given as both 10 and 11 speed shifting components use exact actuation 1-1, one, one. so that's the lever and cable pull. Right, with this, I wanted to get you an exact definite answer from SRAM themselves. So I emailed my buddy Daniel, and Daniel has replied a fairly in-depth answer, but well, this is the tech channel, so it's gotta be in-depth, it's gotta be right, and for you, Eat, Ride, Grow, you're gonna get the exact answer. So. Daniel replied, both the red 10 speed and red 11 speed group sets do in fact use the exact actuation. But this does not mean that the parts are interchangeable. Uh, the front derailleur, rear derailleur and chain rings will all need to be replaced with the SRAM 11 speed components. The 11 speed front shifter has a slight bit more cable pull compared to the 10 speed version and the 11 speed front derailleur also has a slightly wider cage compared to the 10 speed. Now, spacing between the chain rings are also slightly wider on the 11 speed rings. This wider spacing is built into the rings themselves and not into the cranks chain ring tabs. So you would be able to reuse the 10 speed cranks and just fit the new 11 speed rings. The 11 speed rear derailleur has different spacing on the hanger plate to allow the mech to move through the 11 speed cassette range. There we are, eat, ride, grow. I hope you have found Daniel's answer from SRAM absolutely brilliant because I have. And there we are, straight from the horse's mouth, or, well, SRAM's mouth in this case. Next up is a question from Lucian S. Now, Lucian says, what can I stick to my carbon soles to stop them from being scuffed and chipped? Any specific glue I can safely use on carbon fiber to stick some rubber on it? Right, nice question, Lucian. Uh, you could use something like Araldite or a two-part epoxy resin, perhaps, meaning that it's really gonna harden up awfully, awfully well, so you can't afford to make any mistakes with this. So once you've cut out the rubber that you wanna stick on the soles of your shoes, make sure you've got a really thin, even layer all the way up to the edges before placing it on and then applying quite a bit of pressure. You might need to use some clamps or something like that to actually make sure that all those edges are stuck down really, really firmly. Because if they're not, there's a good chance you're gonna snag on something when you're, well, you don't really walk a lot in cycling shoes, but when you do happen to walk along, that they don't start peeling off and we have to repeat that whole process again. Incidentally, this is something I did probably in about 1995 or 1996. Got myself some new shoes, I wanted to protect them, so I did it. So yeah, you're safe enough doing that. Another little bit of trivia as well, not involving me this time, but mountain bikers back in the mid 90s, they used to be really jealous of, our, of, of us road cyclists and I don't blame them. But there was another reason too. We had really, really good cycling shoes and they used to use road shoes that were drilled for SPDs and they would even glue their own mountain bike soles onto the bottom of road shoes because they're jealous of us. Right, next up is James Cairns. Maybe he's from Cairns in Australia. Who knows? Anyway, James says, hello, I wondered if you could recommend some winter cycling shoes as they make riding for several hours in the saddle much more comfortable. Thanks. 
Probably not from Cairns then, if he's asking about winter boots. Either way, uh, I can't actually recommend any specifically because I've not seen your own feet, but I have used them myself for the last, say, seven years, last seven winters. I've used ones from Northwave, also Shimano, and I'm currently on Physique Arctica ones. And I find them absolutely brilliant because, well, for a start, your feet don't get wet, and also they don't get cold. The two things which I really dislike about riding in the winter. Don't really like winter. Um, but something to consider here with winter specific booties, as I like to call them, is you generally don't have such a close fit or as tight fit as you would with your summer road racing shoes because normally you only have one fastening. And in the case of those physiques and also the North Waves and the Shimano's have all had, they tend to have a drawstring type uh, fitting system and then like a sliding toggle to do them up. So. It was, you know, it was good because it, it, they do tighten from the front of the foot right the way to the back, but I like to be able to adjust my shoes just a little bit more. But in the winter, do you know what? If I've got dry feet, if I've got warm feet, I'm happy enough with that. And I think you'll be happy enough with that too. Certainly worth the compromise. And normally as well, inside those shoes, there's a little bit more room so you can put a nice pair of thicker socks on to keep those toes a little bit toasty. Next up is Kristoff and Kristoff wonders, is it necessary to re-grease the Turbo Trainer Free Hub? If yes, how often should I do that? Right then, Christoph, I reckon then you've got one of those direct drive trainers, so you've got a cassette mounted onto it. Now, you probably aren't gonna have to do it that often, or maybe not even at all. The reason being, because you're staying indoors, you're not gonna be washing down that like you would with a normal bike. Oh, you're not gonna be getting a hose pipe, you're not gonna be washing out any grease, uh, and also it's not gonna be open to the elements and getting trashed in the winter well, with road muck and grime. So, the only time I would actually grease a free herb and take apart the pools and everything like that is when it starts to stick. How do we know when it's sticking then? Well, it's when you start to freewheel, which wouldn't be that often really on a turbo trainer, but if you're using something like Zwift and you're drafting downhill, you may end up freewheeling, and you notice it starts to stick. And you'll notice that because sometimes your rear mech may move forward, so the, the actual derailleur cage, or sometimes your upper run of chain becomes really slack and it kind of, wants to push your cranks forward. That's the only time I would really worry about greasing a free hub though on a turbo trainer. Right, Chris James is next on the agenda. Now, Chris says they've got themselves a 2015 Cervelo R3 with Fulcrum Racing Zero wheels. However, due to the very tight fork crown, tire clearance, they're limited to 23 millimeter tires on the front. Any suggestions on how I can increase the clearance so I can run a 25 millimeter tire on the front? What different brand tires or wheels make any difference? I've even heard of people placing shims in the dropouts, but that sounds like a definite bodge. Right, this is a problem I ran into myself on a 2014 Eddie Merckx 525 that I've got. Some of you have seen that. I did a uh, how to hack or bodge a one by conversion. And yeah, that has got ultra close clearances. Now, with yours, Possibly you go to a narrower rim and a 25 mil tire may fit on it or something like that, but it's probably not going to if it's that close. Sadly, it does in fact sound like you're just stuck with it. I do recall, I'm pretty sure Dimension Data had a few problems trying to get tires to clear in their bikes, like the S5 from Cervelo. Uh, an option for you would be actually just to get a new front fork, because you've not mentioned the rear of the bike there, so presumably it, it's got enough clearance, but you could get a new front fork, so there are aftermarket options, and providing, of course, that it's something fairly recent, you will have clearance of the 25 mil in there. Just be aware, though, to get something with the same rake, so you're not gonna be really adjusting your position when you're riding along. Right, Geordie D is next up, and Geordie says, are derailleur cog wheels from the new 105R7000 compatible with the old 105 series? So by this, I think Geordie means the uh, actual uh, derailleur pulley, so the pulley wheels, jockey wheels, whatever you want to call them, I don't mind, one and all here. Uh, my old ones need replacing, and I'm a sucker for hollowed out ones because of bling. Uh, now, Yordi says they tried some cheap China ceramic ones, they jammed after about 150 kilometers or so, not going down that path again. If not compatible, can I suggest an affordable brand that makes them? Right then, yeah, don't go down that cheap, horrible, nasty jockey wheels. I know loads of people have fallen for those glamorous colors and well, they've been left with squeaky jockey wheels. Right then, those uh, R7000 jockey wheels, designed for 11 speed, 5600 designed for 10 speed. They are totally interchangeable. I've done it, it works absolutely fine. Now, you have mentioned about the uh, cutout or the hollowed out bling look. Don't blame you, it looks great, but 
something to be aware of here. They do tend to accumulate a little bit more grime than usual. So get yourself some pipe cleaner, something like that, and you can clean out the inside nice and easy. Uh, actually, both of them as well are still with the bushing inside of the jockey wheels and not sealed bearings from memory as well there. So there's no definite upgrade or anything like that, but it's highly unlikely you're actually gonna notice any drivetrain friction. Right, now we've got Noor, and Noor says, John, while manufacturers state the upper limit for tire width, can you fit wider tires and what problems would you incur or occur if you went higher? Uh, for example, their 2017 Specialized Roubaix states 32C as the maximum. Could they fit a set of knobbly 33 tires or possibly even more? Nice to hear from you, buddy. Right, tire width. This one is always controversial. Now, different tires measure up differently on different width rims. So that could always play part of the little puzzle here. The best thing I could recommend to you is actually to pop into your local bike shop and try some on your existing wheels and see if they fit. That's simple, right? Now, be aware though, cyclocross tires, well, some have bigger knobs than others. So some may clear and some may not. So it is a really, really critical decision to make there because if you find that the knobs of the tires are rubbing on the inside of the stays, believe me, I've seen it done before when I worked in the warranty department back in my junior days in the bicycle industry and I once saw a chain stay that was basically worn through from the inside due to someone running a really, really, really fat mountain bike tire on a bike that wasn't designed for it. So just go on the really safe side of caution there and yeah, pop into your local shop and try some tires on your wheels to actually see what fits. But if they say 28 or 32 is the maximum, go with that generally. Right, next up is Phil Adams. Now Phil says, John, is there a way to protect cleat bolts from the severe corrosion and wear that they are subjecting them to over the winter? Now Phil often finds that they are difficult to remove. Would titanium bolts solve this problem or are they too fragile to be used in that application? Phil, nice question and a problem which I absolutely love helping people with here because cleat bolts have a real tendency, like you say, to become stuck in a shoe and having to get a pillar drill and get them out and all that, and it's not a straightforward job necessarily for everyone. So, simple way to do this is to remove one of your cleat bolts at a time and then cover it in grease. Now the grease you use, anti-seize grease, copper grease, uh, medium viscosity grease, even Vaseline I've used in the past when I was away somewhere and couldn't find any grease, and then simply apply it onto the thread, refit it, and then repeat the process. Importantly, don't take out all of the bolts at one time. That means you're gonna to have to realign your cleats and that's gonna take, well, it could actually end up giving you bad knees, couldn't it? So just do it once at a time, you'll be all right. But importantly here, how often you do it really does depend on how much salt you're riding through on the road. So maybe every two or three months you could do it. I mean, it's not a lot of work. It's probably five minutes in total to actually do it. So it's a nice, easy bit of preventative maintenance to keep your shoes and cleats in good condition. And the final question this week comes in from the Fifth Horseman, which sounds like someone outside of Buckingham Palace. Right, Fifth Horseman, John, I have a problem. My saddle height is at the same height as my handlebar height. I can't return the frame. How can I get a more aero position? Can I just shorten, then slam my stem to get the same effect? By the way, my bike is a giant contend too. Any help would be great because I don't know where to start. Horseman, right. Normally, a lot of bikes out there come with a stem which has a very slight rise on it from the head tube. However, there's a little solution for you here. You could in fact get a negative rise stem. So by that, I mean it's gonna be perfectly flat or in some cases they actually angle downwards a little bit. You see some of the pros out there using them to get super low, super aero. It does look pretty cool too. So how are you gonna know though which one to go for? Because obviously you don't wanna buy a stem and then realize it doesn't work quite right for your position. So there's a link below in the description to a really great website, which I use quite often actually when doing bike fits for people. And it compares your current stem and the stem which you're proposing to buy possibly because you enter in the dimensions and the details including the head tube angle of your bike and it will let you know basically where you're gonna end up or at least where the front of your stem is gonna end up. It's absolutely great and I would highly recommend you check out that website. Right, that is it for this week's GCN Tech Clinic. I do hope that I've been able to help answer and solve your bike related problems. Like I said at the start, if you've got one, leave it for me down there in the comment section below. I absolutely love getting stuck into them. 
And also, don't forget to, to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Whole heap of goodies for you to check out. And also, why not like and share this video with your friends too? And now for another great video, how about clicking just down here?